I hope you guys had a great week last week listening to part one of two with Kent Beerley. Welcome back to Jimmy Eat Repeat. Today you're going to be hearing part two of two or more. Let us know what you think. Drop it in the comments below. You know, we've toyed with, you know, straight through-ish formats. Um, nobody likes to have a big break in the middle. And sometimes the only reason that there's a big break in the middle is because you're trying to stick to your start and end times, right? right. Well, you can't. So if you, you if can't. I tell, if I'm selling tickets and I say the finals are at six o'clock, but we happen to finish prejudging at two o'clock, fuck, we got four hours. Yeah. You know, so that, that's really what it's about. It's not that that huge break is necessarily built in, but you don't know, you know, six months in advance if you're going to have 20 people or 220 people competing. Right. So you have to plan for, you know, Worst, you know, worst case, best case, you're, you're planning for a certain scenario, right? What? You know, you're playing that over in your head. You know, what do I need to do? When do I need to start? When do finals start? Because, you know, years ago, Kent, you remember you'd, you'd show up for prejudging in the morning. The, the audience was damn near empty. Empty, yeah. But you come back in the night show, it's everybody's, at, well, not only dressed. is it packed, dressed. everybody's dressed, like it's dressed a black, up. A black tie affair. Yeah. Absolutely. And now you get, you know, I've said it before. Some of these bodybuilding shows have become like nine-year-old birthday parties. You know, it's it's nine o'clock Saturday morning. They want to be out of there by two o'clock. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, and some, I took some flack this year for starting our finals when we did and the show ending when we did. Um, yes, I ran an hour and a half late at the night show. Um, there were some issues, and I'll own up to that. But I should have been done at nine o'clock, not 1030. And that would have left, you know, much more time for, you know, dinner and dancing and whatever else you do after the event. But I noticed a huge difference in the size of the audience at the night show than I have in years past. So, you know, as a bodybuilder, yes, you're there competing, but you are also the entertainment. You are the show. You know, it's not just, you know, Lauren and, you know, coming to buy a ticket to see you compete. There's fans of the sport sitting in that audience. Right. You know, I had people come up to me from, I, I couldn't even tell you how many states, but that drove in, they brought their kids and their families, and they were staying in Atlantic City. They wanted to come see the Mr. America from fucking far away. Yeah, They're not going to do that if the show is at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right, right. You know, so if you want to be bigger, bigger than something, you know, other than a 9-year-old's birthday party, I, I think athletes have to start recognizing, like, Hey, there's people coming to see you compete. It's not just about you. You know, you're there to put on a show, right? That's why we do, you know, that's part of the reason you do a posing routine. You know, there's, there's, that's why there's judging. That's why it's a competition. You know, people want to see, wow, you know, look at, look at Kent and Joe battling it out on stage. Like people want to see that. But if it's at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to make it there. Yeah. So, no, you know, I, I, I like I, I like a little bit later of a show. I do like having a little break in between um, for, for a whole host of reasons. You know, like if my audio is not right or, you know, the cameraman's like, hey, I'm in a bad spot. Like whatever, whatever the situation is, you can now readjust and, and keep going, you know. And, and I, I talk about this a lot off air that a bodybuilding show similar to any other business it's your it's your grand opening and you're going out of business sale all at the same time right you have to you know you want to attract as many people sell as many tickets as you possibly could right and and it really really packed the place you know you want athletes competing against each other you want audience you know cheering these athletes athletes on so there, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of decisions we have to make as promoters as what's going to be best for everyone Right. How 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 do you accommodate the fans? How do you accommodate the athletes? How do I accommodate what I'm trying to do personally? You know, do I have a meeting I need to get to early in the morning so I don't want to start till 12? Like there's a lot of things that come into play, not to mention union labor. You know, if they start, <laughs> you know, I mean, if they're running eight hours like shit, I got to figure out a way to get the, the show done in eight hours or we're paying overtime. Right. And, it's you know, there's a minimum call for overtime. It's four hours. So if I have 10 union union workers there. That's 40 hours more labor I'm paying right. because the show ran over 15 minutes. So, you know, as as a promoter, I'm doing what I could to make sure that show is, you know, it's it's run smooth. It's run fair. It's 
the right amount of time. It's not too fast. It's not too slow. You know, we're, we literally, you know, we're, we're timing out each class months in advance based on our entries, you know, and, and looking at who's competing, you know, hypothetical, if you have, if you have 20 me shacks in men's bodybuilding, we're going to be a little while. Yeah. It's, it's going to take some time, but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's hard business, but I, I do also, you know, wish for those days past, you know, it just, well, yeah, it, it was, it was different. And every show felt like a major thing. Right. But also back in the day, there wasn't as many shows. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who or why people think it's better to start at two and be, I mean, start at nine and be over by two. Why? I, I don't, well, the people say like, "Well, I, I could get out of there then." Like, oh, yeah, well, if you're in a rush to get out of there, you just spent six months getting ready to get there. Yeah. This is like, wow, amazing! We started at nine, we're done at two. I'm like, I'd rather start at twelve and be done at seven. Right? Yeah, you me know, too. I, yeah, I, I mean, as a competitor, I don't want to compete at nine. I can remember the Yorton Cup I did down in Maryland the one year, and actually, it was also in Phoenix. They both we were on stage at eight o'clock in the morning. I can't even work out at eight o'clock. I can't work out till the afternoon. Yeah. Eight o'clock in the morning. And this was back was actually when we were the last flight out of Phoenix before Sandy. So when was that? 2001. That was the last. No. Time uh, oh, 2011. Oh, oh 2011. yeah. Yeah. 2011. I think Sandy was. Yeah. So eight o'clock in the morning out in Phoenix. So that's like three hours. Three hours. Yeah, yeah, you think you feel like it's five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But you know what? We did the judging in the morning. You came, you know, you had your break. They did the amateurs, and we came back and did the pro. That and this, the format was perfect, but it was split up because you had the pros first. Nobody's in the audience because you're out in Phoenix. There's nobody there. Nobody goes to see the pros anyway. Right. And then, then they had the amateurs, and then the pros would after like a little break. Then the pros came out for the awards, and then the amateurs went. So that was a kind of a cool setup too. Where they mm. inter- intertwined the two things, so there really was no dead stage time. Maybe just like an hour or, t- or an hour and a half. And, and right. And yeah. had that show been later, like you know, it, it, you may have had a much better audience too. Right. Well, the uh, people show up for the amateur. So at, towards the end of the pros, people started showing up. Right. And right. and and yeah, I don't know. The straight through format is a is a. I mean, I like it. Because we we do like the real. I mean, I say real, but we do everything together, and then we just do the awards afterwards. Right. So it's different because people still do a straight through format. I mean, I think Mr. America is the same way, where you do the judging, but then you then you take a break, and then you're doing the routines and the awards. So it's kind of like that's not well. A lot of organizations do that, where it's not really. There's different variations of the straight through format, but yeah, I. Th- I think like nobody wants to sit through 50 routines, which is what a lot of, I mean, it still happens. Yeah. Well, but, I know, you know, with the Mr. America, I think we do, uh, we did top the, five. Class, the class, yeah, the top five for the classes that actually have routine. a routine. Yeah. Yeah, right. right. And, and I like that. Like you have to, you have to earn your way to perform your routine. Right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm of this thought process that it's a competition. You know, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. Right. Right. And, if you're one of the best, you'll make it to the routine round for your respective class. So you don't do like if if you're a guy, you're sitting in the audience. Do you want to do you want to watch a bunch of bodybuilding and classic routines, or would you like to see the bikini girls strutting on stage? Me personally, yeah, I want to watch the guys' routines. <laughs> you're such a liar. No, I do. <laughs> Why are you lying? I'm I'm not- <laughs> I want to see the bikini girls. I mean, what guy doesn't no, want I'm to not, see? I, if you're, I'll tell you, if I'll tell you a, why, Ken. If you're a person, if you're the okay, you're that guy with his family from out of town, don't know anybody. You want to see a bunch of dudes doing the routine, or you want to see some bikini women? I still want to see the dudes doing the routine. <laughs> Is Jenna sitting next to you? You're no, no, no. There's no, <laughs> there's no, there's nobody, there's nobody here. I think she's still working. But you know, I'll, I'll tell you why, Kent. The sport was born from just men, right? Right, I get it. Well, okay. body, okay. yeah, body, body. So, right, so, so we'll we'll start with that. The sport was born with that. Bodybuilding, to me, is an art form, right? 
And those routines are part of that art form, right? Not only are you going to build and sculpt your body, you're also going to, you know, bend, twist, and contour and pose your body in such a way that it looks best for you, right? Now, I've seen great bodies on stage that couldn't pose worth a shit. And I've seen shit bodies on stage where the people were just like, you know, lights out the best poser on stage. To me... I'm I'm a live entertainment guy where I'd rather go to like a jazz. I don't like jazz, but I'd rather go to a jazz bar and watch a band than a DJ playing the same music. Like I want to be, I want to be entertained. Right. And the bikini routines, like there's not, there's not a lot of routine there. Right. Front side back. There's, there's, they're not, you know, they're not up there. Flexing. If you're, if you're, now, letting, don't get me if, wrong. I enjoy watching the girls. Okay, I got a story to tell you. Tampa, two years ago, right? We had two of the top wellness competitors around. We had Day uh, Azario, and we right. had, and then we had Delilah, who's now an IFBB pro wellness, but she was also a, a AMBF pro. Right. So if you're at the expo down in Tampa, you're in the middle, you know, we're like center stage. Throughout that's a hell whole, of a setup, by the way. Oh, that's a hell of a setup you got down there. So throughout the whole event, I kept turning around, seeing who's watching. The guys are out there, you know, people watching, walking by watching. The two wellness girls came out to do their routines. Everybody was on, watching. They put on that Brazilian music. They went out there. I turned around. I'm tell you no lie. There must have been a thousand people watching them. A oh yeah, thousand yeah, people absolutely. watching. Them. But you asked me what Mark wants to see. And we had some of the top bodybuilders, Jay Wright. We had Keith, you know, Showtime Keith. We had yeah. these top guys there. Nothing compared to Delilah and, and Jay. Right, and so, and you know, well, that's that's part of the reason for. Now you can lie and say you layout watch of the guys show. pose than women out there. But I didn't I, say I. You can tell me later. You said you, you said <laughs> specific. You, you said specifically bikini. I call and bullshit. I want to watch. Listen, I can what about watch Gabriella. You see her routine? Yeah, I've watched it like five uh, times today because she she's she's coming back and and she's gonna try to reclaim that and hold on to that title. So you know, I'm 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 watching. I'm watching. Misty Weatherford. These girls. They. Yeah, listen, they they you're not listen. Play. You're not wrong. You're not wrong by any means. You're absolutely not wrong. However, Jenna, Jenna has to be there. Is she there? Let me see. No, no, she, she's not. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're you're not wrong, and I I do enjoy seeing that. But when it comes to the bodybuilding routines, even women's bodybuilding or a women's physique division, I want to see those routines, right? Because you know as well as I do. Once they start posing, they uh, athletes, we take on a different look, a different shape, something that you may not have seen before. Once you're able to express your particular art individually outside of mandatories. Now, in bikini, the mandatories are the same things that they're going to do when they come out by themselves. It's not always true. They it is not always totally true. Totally different. It is not always true. And I would go out on a limb to say, yes, you're right. I'd rather watch more women's routines, but I'd like to see women put more into those routines. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Well, any- I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of the T walk because I think it's just like I don't know. You're walking back and forth. It's fucking stupid. I don't like it. I know you do it. I sit there. I cringe. I'm like, ah, why can't they just do more right here? Um, well, that's what, yeah, I mean, that's what Sammy get creative. Joe had, Sammy Joe had her box, something like that, center stage. I, I know Daryl used it at, at the um, his Florida Pro last year, eight foot box in the middle of the stage. That's where right. the, that's where, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. that's where the, they did their walk, their walks instead of right. like the T walk. T- I hate the T walk. We use a triangle walk. It's a little different. It's more they have more freelance. More of a triangle than a 
box. So they, yeah, they have more opportunity to do different things in the, yeah. try trying. It's not just walk up to the front, do a pose, walk to here, walk. But Sammy Joe's idea was an eight eight foot box. Hey, it helps keep everybody a little bit more centered. Well, and it makes pictures look better. I mean, it, right? Because you have the big logo behind you. There's no awkward angle, so it, right. it, it it worked out when they did it at the Florida Pro. That was it worked out. It worked out pretty well. We were actually considering using that but we have not we put it on hold yeah yeah you know that's that's part of the reason we do like an eye walk we want everybody center stage right um you know for for video for pictures yeah. um i i personally like that the best i want you to be center stage in the spotlight um you know walking off to the sides you don't want me jumping into the crowd no no listen when you're doing your free posing routine <laughs> Great, but you know your introductories and stuff. I like to keep everybody, you know, oh, centered. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, Kent. Well, we're gonna have to do this again sometime. And uh, in the meantime, are you competing at Mister America again this year? Well, let me see. I'll tell you what I am gonna do. This the Mister America this year, I believe, might be the same age as you. It's the 85th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I uh, here is what I I plan to do. I'm doing the Florida Pro in June. I'm doing the Yorton Cup September, September 22nd. Mr. America October 12th. I'm doing the USBF Pro Master October 19th. I am doing once again Sully's show uh in uh November 16th up in Rhode Island so I could qualify for the Yorton the following year. I will be doing as of now, the Monster Mash in the beginning of November, and then the WMBF Worlds at the end of the month. And I have Natural Olympia question mark. So I don't know. That's the. I don't know if I can do a show every weekend in November. That's a little crazy. But that's the beginning of the, or is that the second weekend in the month? Second, second that's, or third. It's the ninth, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Um, I was uninvited from the Natural Olympia this past year, so I'm not really paying too much attention. So, so that's that's on a that's a fat that, that's probably a no go because I don't like the way they make you they don't they tell you you have to do a pro show but they're very limited on what pro shows that you can actually do so I, I at least with the the WMBF you just have to do a pro show you don't have to do a specific pro show right right where the 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 ones are very limited with the PMBA but so hey, all, so Ken you know you so you've competed hang on so twenty twenty four. 2023, 2022, right? Did yeah. you compete in 21? Yes, you did. Yeah, I did the, the original. Mr. American Mr. 21. Right, at the show. Did boat. you do something else that year? I don't remember. Then I, I went to Vegas. Right. I did, uh, I did Martin's show out in Vegas. Right, I, I, right, right, right. Okay. So, one, two, three, four. And how how old are you, Ken? Can I ask? Can 60. you answer? 60. 60. Yeah. 60. Okay. So... Let, let's let's jump into this real quick. One, two. So you're competed four years straight. How do you feel? Feel great. Good. Last year I competed all year with a hernia the size of an uh, apple sticking out of my groin. Right. Right. <laughs> so, do right, you think it's all fixed? Do you think there is a big benefit to? taking extended amounts of time off in natural bodybuilding when you're younger perhaps but as you're older what like it's what i like to do it's a challenge to be better every like i've been better every year and i was better last year than i i think i ever was right and so that's I, at 59 and i felt and i felt no i was 60 in july so half the year okay I so think. you're still 60 okay yeah but i i felt as the season went I don't know. I've been doing this so long. You, you kind of know what to do as the year goes on. Like to beat yourself up is, is, does it make sense after if you're competing all year, if you're doing three shows then yeah, then, you know, if you space them out, right. It all depends. I, yeah, I mean, I did the, my biggest break last year was from the end of June when I did the, uh, the OCB show out. And um, I did Glenn's show out in Allentown. And then I didn't do anything until the Yorton Cup. But still, you kind of you. Fa I've always been a. You can always phase up 
and then gradually, you know, you, you just keep an eye on your weight. You go up, you're comfortable, you work, you get good workouts in, you know, you feel strong again, and then you start dieting again. We all know when you diet, you're not strong. And right, then right. you're you're very vulnerable, so you kind of lower the weights, and you just you just go for the the fake intensity, I call it. You know, you're not, you can't throw weights around, but you got to create intensity. Well, the perceived rate of exertion is a real thing, right? Just because right. you're not benching, you know, 315, but right. you're benching, you know, 265. If you're putting a effort level of a 10 in, it right. doesn't matter what's on the bar. You could be, you could be bench pressing, you know, kittens and puppies. It doesn't matter. Right. As long as you get the, you, you, you just get that metabolism all jacked up. And no matter how you do it, whether it's drop sets, supersets, whatever you have to do. And then, I mean, I, I'm a keto guy. I do. I, I so my cardio is just simple, little sit on a bike. That's all. How do you say cardio? Yeah, nothing crazy. I just get on a bike. I watch. I read books. I watch whatever. I'm up to two hours the last two weeks before a show, but it's like nothing. I do right. half here. I do half at home. Right. And you know, it's just you just got to know. You got to know your body. If you don't, if you don't get enough rest, you're then you're screwed. If you if you're right. if you're sore, you, you know, you got an injury. You just got to. You kind of figure out what the problem. Just don't do what hurts it. I mean, I last year I, by the end of the season I felt great. I was like I wanted to do another show. I mean, I was like, okay, what can I do? There's got to be another show I can do. You ran out of shows to do. <laughs> once, you're, once you're once you're on a roll, you don't want as long you know you yeah, feel you don't good. Stop. But I was getting my hernia fixed the day after Sully's show, so I kind of had no choice. I had to stop. But yeah, and then that's well, been fine. That's healed up. The doctors within two weeks I was fixed. So everybody out there that's that's younger than you, which is probably everybody out there. Everybody that's um, listening, yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm not a big advocate of taking extended amounts of time off, um, and I, I I might get flack for this, but I could back up every statement that I say with actual fact. So we could look at clients that say started competing in, I don't know. I think I have files back to 2012, eight, whenever, but people that have competed year after year, after year, after year have also looked better year after year, after year. And, well, here's here. Okay, go ahead. Right. So I can I argue. I don't, want, I don't that, want to forget what I was thinking, but go ahead. Well, at your age, you better go ahead then. <laughs> no, well, here's, here's the thing. You do a show, right? You do a show. Coach tells you, oh, you need to take time off because you need to do this, you need to do that. See, but, I don't buy that. I think but, the coach is full of shit. You know, I do too. But how did you do in that show? Did you win? Because if you didn't win, if you You can still do better. If you didn't look your best, then you're not – what are you taking a break from? You right. haven't achieved the ultimate. You haven't achieved – not even winning because we all know people win shows that – aren't really very good. It's just a bad lineup. I mean, that's just right. the way that it is sometimes. But if you're not at your best physically that you feel you can be, why would you take time off? Because how you look the best in natural bodybuilding is you need to be the leanest fucker on stage. Well, right. And especially if, which is a whole, which is a whole other story. I'm yes, gonna you're, time, you're, I'm going to take time right. off because I need to get bigger. I'm like, you know how long I've been trying to get bigger? Since I was fucking 21 years old, I've been trying to get bigger. I'm the same right. size, the same weight now as I've always been. The only difference is that I compete at a lighter weight because the sport has changed. I right. have a picture on my wall. I mean, I'm 23 years old. I'm 173 pounds. And I, if I showed up like that at a show now, I wouldn't even be top five. Right. I might right. be the biggest guy on stage for, for my my class, but I'm not going to win because I don't have the, I don't have the quality, the conditioning. So which, 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 which brings us to another point. Like, I don't listen, I don't know when that changed or when it didn't change. And I'd like to save that and come back to that for, for another time that it's listen, I want, I want to see muscle. You listen, you've judged a Mr. America. So you're, you, you've been in that judges meeting where I, where I tell everybody it's a bodybuilding show. I want size and muscle first for muscle is first. And, 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 and conditioning you, was like third or fourth on my list. Then we'll get to that. You know, we, we, we want, you know, we want the size, we want the symmetry, and then we want the conditioning, right? I don't think just showing up as the leanest guy there should win the show. Right, because absolutely. You, you, right. You've seen it as, as much as I have that, you know, you have a five foot nine, 121 pound man, you know, shredded to the bone, and he posts a picture on, on you know, Facebook or Instagram, and everybody's like, oh, wow, you're amazing. 
Yeah. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, no, you're not. Like, you're shredded, but that doesn't mean you're an amazing bodybuilder. You're missing, like, where's, where's your symmetry? Where's your size? You're shaped like a telephone pole. That's not going to win a show. Sure, being shredded is impressive, but you're not going to win anything. Right. You got to have, yeah, you have to have that, 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 that foundation. You have to have the size. You have to have the shape. But the thing is, until you have all that, what, what, what are you taking time off for? Right. How much? All right. So let's, I'll, I'll tell you this. So with a client that competed, say, um, five years in a row, did 15 to 20 ish shows. First show, we'll say 10% body fat, right? Regardless whether that number is accurate or not, I track at, at 115 pounds. And then, you know, you go through the season, you get a little better. Maybe by the end of the season, you know, 9.5% body fat at 112 or 13 pounds. And then next year they come back and they get back on stage at 115 pounds, the same 10% body fat, but everybody's like, Oh my God, what did you do? You look so different this year. And I could back that up with, I would venture to say, hundreds of clients that have done that year over year and have improved year over year versus the clients that took off a year or two and came back to only look the exact Exact same. same. Right. Because they, like, they just they go back to where they're comfortable. Everybody wants to be comfortable. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable during the process. You could show up year after how many people year after year after year after year after year. They look the same, right? And they get mad because they don't do better. Well, do something. Yeah, like uh, Maria Laura Popa. She won pro bikini. She's competed with us for the past few years. If you look at her pictures, and she competes every year, she keeps getting better year after year. And she's not she's not taking off. And I could go through 50 or 60 women that have been doing that. And just based off of what they've been doing in the Mr. America, look at Nicole Goodno. She's a stellar freaking athlete. And she's competed the last three or four years. I don't know. She wasn't there in 2020, but since 21. So 20, 21, 22, 23. So three years straight. And she's gotten better each and every single year. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's there's something to be said about that. And I think when a coach says, oh, well, you're going to need a year off, what I hear is you're going to pay me $2,400 right, before exactly. we even think about right, right, going back right. into a diet where you're going to pay me another $2,400 for the year. Well, the other thing, too, is you have you have certain coaches. I mean, maybe people with coaches, maybe the people that don't have coaches, they put themselves through, through so much stress to do a show and it's that's not the right way. So yes, yeah, right. You and take, it's a bad experience. Should you take time off because you're not in a healthy state? Yeah, you well, should take time off. But find somebody that can help you do it right. Which brings me to my 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 next point. But then I want to close it out from there. I want I want you to come back um, sooner than later. There's a lot of people that just aren't okay after their shows. They're just, they're just not okay. They're not okay with the relationship with food. They're not okay with the relationship with the gym. And if anybody out there feels that way, I want you to know from, you know, two and a half plus decades of doing, it's okay to not be okay, but speak up and say, Hey, I'm not okay with this right now. Right. You know? Your, your, your physical health and your mental health and your emotional well-being is way more important than, than, than stepping back on stage. So you're not alone. It happens to a lot of people. It's normal. It sucks. But it's okay to not be okay. You don't have to hide it. Just let's get you fixed and let's get you into a better place. So when it is your time again, you can come back better. So are you talking about people that do well in a show because there's two different types of people there's two different ways well, i don't i don't go. think i don't think if it people matters do if well do in a show, yeah but i think if you do well in a show it's that come down you you're like right. you're looking you're looking you're like oh you're you finished the show you did great you're at this high, right you get that that and all now of a sudden what it's like bam but then you have people that feel like they busted their ass they did everything they were supposed to do whether they have a coach or not and they didn't do well. So now they're mentally depressed because they feel like they failed. 
So now that's messing up with their whole brain. Right. So, so yeah, listen, two different I, aspects I think, of that. I think with what I said, I think that covers both aspects yeah. of that. It's okay to not be okay, right? But you, yeah, you need to tell people though. Right. right. And I don't I don't know if we do not Mark and Kent, but I don't know if we as as a society of, of natural bodybuilding are doing a good job at letting people know like, hey, it's okay to not be okay. Right. Um, you know, don't self sabotage or, you know, beat don't, yourself up because you're feeling out, Yeah, don't something. go out and eat and gain thirty pounds because you're depressed. That's, right. Like that that doesn't Eating your problem. feelings doesn't fix it. Right. You know? So, you know, with that, you know, that, that's a, uh, that, that, I think that's an important topic to cover. I want to come yeah, back and I want to talk absolutely. to you more about that. Um, because there's a ton of people out there like that, that, I don't know, are suffering, are struggling, you know, and it, it's, it's win or lose, right? Like either way you step off of that stage if you were a winner, you're like, holy shit, now what? What does my life mean now after this? And if you were a loser, you're a fucking loser. If you're a loser, <laughs> you know, and you don't get the placing you were hoping for, right? you then get off a stage saying, I failed, my coach sucks, my posing coach sucks, my suit sucked, my tan sucked, my hair sucked, my makeup sucked, nothing went right, everything was totally wrong, um, and then you you beat yourself up that way too. So, Bodybuilding is about improving each and every show, each and every season, each and every year. And it's about it's about self-improvement. And the only way you can improve is if you actually have some self-reflection right. and, you know, look in the mirror. What could I do better? What could what did I do good? What did I do bad? Yeah, you have to have a you have to have a meeting with yourself and, and you have to say, OK, how did it go? What did I Yeah, What did I do right? What did I do wrong? Where did I wh- where could I have done it better? Maybe I should have different types of strategy about going about it i mean there's so many things questions that people like i mean i've never had a coach so it's like I, these conversations i have with myself but if somebody has a coach they need to like but yeah but, but like but Ken, you said like you, you think, said before though these coaches a lot of them just want to make money they're right. not like they're not thinking about the best interest of their client for sure no they're they're not and i think as a coach listen if you could get me shredded and you could get me all trained up and ready for a show. Great. But know, know your role and stay in your lane. Right. Like I think, th- I think there's too many coaches out there putting out not, not information, just giving bad or wrong advice. You know, like how, how do you, how do you diet for six months, bust your ass in the gym a week after your show? It's just like, yep, I'm getting ready for next year. Like, what? Like, how, how is that possible? Like, how are you getting ready for next year? How are you already having problems with your food? And, and you know, like, I, I don't, I don't get that. So I think maybe, maybe off season coaching is something that people should look into. I don't well, know. It, it, the problem too, is that when, 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 when I know, when I talk to some of my clients in the off season, I try to stay in touch with them. I try to say, Hey, you need to come in. Let's do a workout. Let's see where you're at. See where your mind's right. at. They're like, oh no, I'm I'm good. I'm good. And then they'll come to you four months later, and they're not you know, good. I, yeah, and then they're, and they're like 20, 25 pounds over their weight stage weight, and then they're they're freaking lost. Yeah, I really haven't been working out that much, so th- that's not a good thing either. But right, they, right. But, well, but and they, that's why it's important to have that coach. You know, where you know you are checking in with them. Like, hey, what, right. what's up? What's going on? You know, come in. Let's 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 chat. Let's get a workout in. Let's yeah. see how you're feeling. You know. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely do want to come back to that. Um, there are a couple guests I'd like to get on to discuss what they went through and struggles that they went through, you know, post competition. Right. Um, whether it was you know one season or they've been off for multiple seasons, um, I think it'll be a big benefit. You know, and if if we're not out there trying to help and and make people better, you know, it's really this is all a waste of time. Well, it's a sport to. Make you feel good, make you healthier. So it's got to be in yeah. the mind too, you know. It's not yeah. we're not the NPC where we're just throwing people to the wolves, you know. It's it's, right. it's a year round thing, and it, yeah, every you got to be healthy in the head. One sure. more quick question: Are yes. you sitting? Well, that I, would be two questions. So are, you are sitting. I am sitting. You spoke it, so I'm going to speak on it. NPC.
Can the NPC crush all of natural bodybuilding by starting a natural circuit? It, keep in mind, when I say that, it would be similar to all the natural organizations now with urine testing, drug testing, water standards, the whole same exact thing, but under the NPC. Do they take over natural bodybuilding? All right, well, I, I do not think so, and I, and I will say it because it's very similar to the IFBB and the IFBB physique. That didn't make it. That They've floundered. Although the MPC is their business model is the best in bodybuilding, um, all those articles that were written about how bad they were, nobody even gave a shit about it. Nope. Um, so they, but they have the numbers, and they also there's a lot of natural people that compete in the MPC. Um, so they, it's a natural funnel, but I'm not sure that people will will take them serious. There's half people that might be, but other half, I mean, I've done natural NPC shows before and there was no drug testing. So there's a lot of people that have gone through that. Now, well, but if, if there was, but if, if they there do, was, if there was but a person, I, but I, I think people are going to be skeptical that the NPC could put out a natural product. That's legitimate natural. Now, will they be separate? Will they be a, a part of other shows? I mean, that's sure. They'll be separate. Let's, let's just say hypothetically. <laughs> well, this year it's the same weekend as the Mr. America, the Olympia, but let's just say the Olympia has the natural Olympia, the IFBB natural Olympia, aside from trademarks and all that shit. They run something concurrently with the Olympia. See, I who's I, not gonna who's not gonna want to do that? Who's not gonna want to qualify to go compete in the IFBB Natural Olympia? Or so you're saying it'd be the same weekend as? Well, they, I'm just saying this year it's the same. You know, the, the Olympia is no, the same I, as the Mister America. No, no it would be the like, same I, weekend I, as the Mister America. But if, I think the only way the only way it would work. They have to be totally separate. They have to be run by totally separate people. And they almost have to pretend like the other NPC doesn't exist. Because it's, right. it's just, I mean, I've done that. We have, we have, we have I, you know, um, Courtney Spath just won an IFBB Pro card. Congratulations to her. She's a fucking tremendous natural athlete. She just won an IFBB Pro card. Last year, we had a couple other natural athletes go win IFBB oh, there's a, there's pro a, cards. There's a lot, but here's the thing, though. They they get their pro card, and how many of them are, are competitive in the in the Well, not, not, not naturally, now, but what if court, there was that natural circuit? What if court, there was that natural circuit, Kent? You wouldn't want your IFBB pro card? Honest. Well, I've been trying to get my IFBB pro card for, for my whole life. I mean, right. now, that, now, As that our... now that I'm 60 is the, is my opportune time to do it, but I've made a decision to not support the NPC anymore. Okay, which is well, totally totally fine, right? I mean, but, I mean, I would love to have. I mean, not that I would. What, what would you do? They're not going to have natural pro shows, are they? I mean, that, that that's like. I mean, I I don't know. I was just putting out a hypothetical. But if they well, that, were to, so who let, let's, wouldn't? Uh, well, no, I know a lot. I know a lot of people that I've competed against. Cleveland Thomas, you got all these. You got um. Well, yeah, he he he. You know, he won the Mr. America in two thousand fifteen. Fifteen, sixteen, fifteen. Right. Siobhan so won then, in 16. so that, you know, these guys go into. I mean, first of all, if you win, you get your pro card in an NPC show, then you're a freak to begin with. So there are freaks out there. Like Courtney's clearly a freak, but we, how would she stack up against Sid Gillen? I mean, do you think? I mean, personally. I think she would give Sid a run for her money. Other than this, other than Sid's stage experience at know. that level, Sid is like seems to be unbeatable. I mean, I'd love to see Courtney beat Sid. I mean, they're both friends of mine, so it'd be interesting to see. So yeah, but yeah, I think I, Cor I think Courtney outsizes her. And if you've ever seen, well, you know, you've seen Sid in person. Oh, yeah, 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 she's not. I think Courtney definitely little, outsizes her. Sid's a little tiny thing, but she's yeah. freaking jacked. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to see that. I mean, that would be. I'm curious to see what Courtney. Uh, 
I mean, if she's going to do an IFBB pro show, I don't know. Well, she's going to have to do a couple IFBB pro shows, get some points, and get her ass to the Olympia. Yeah. I, I, I would pay for her travel for that. Yeah, I'd like to. You know, she's, she's amazing. Courtney, if you're listening or watching, if you build up your points for the Olympia, well, well, I guess they're going to pay for your travel, but I will help you out too. Which is another thing, Kent. Like, at that level, wow, we have so much to talk about. At that level... Pros aren't paying for shit. They're not paying for anything. They're paying for their drug. Are they paying for their drugs? Well, right, 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 right. I mean, they're not. They're not paying for contest <laughs> entry. They're not paying for travel. They're not paying for food. They get a per diem rate while they're, you know, while while they're there. Yo, well, they're they also have... under. They're also under contracts. These people correct are under contracts, but they're also under legitimate contracts. Right, right. they're contracts. Right, they're getting. I, mean, paid I know to that do a certain amount of guest posing at a certain rate. You know, well, they all have they all have uh, vendor contracts. I know that um, when I did speak to Sid's parents about you know they're they're she's she, well now she, this was back when she had only won one. They she had great great contracts with her supplement yeah. companies. Everything she, you know they yeah they but you got that's a whole nother hold on they're not all on that stuff for sure. Right? No. No. All right, well, Kent, let's get the hell off of here. Yeah, I have a, uh, I have to be up at zero four hundred tomorrow. Uh, you got, you got Jenna waiting to slap you for saying you. No, no, she's not here. I actually, no, 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 she, she, <laughs> she's, she's not here. Um, but I, I do want, I do, I do want to come back. I do yeah, want to talk I'd about, like, you know, I'd like to come the, back. the state of mind of some of these athletes. Um, what we could do to to help, and uh, we'll keep shooting the shit. Yeah, here right. making trying to make the sport better every day. Kent, what's your uh, where's everybody find you? Kent Beerly, ANBF dot com. Well, the, our website for the ANBF ANBF uh, Natural dot com. Uh, they can email me at krb forty six at comcast dot net or any of my Instagram pages or Facebook. Okay, now guys, if if you don't know Kent already, I hope you know you probably got a pretty good insight into him today. He's been on the show before. Um, with with Mike Newman, Kent has a lot of valuable information, a lot of history, a lot of history <laughs> comes with age, and also what comes with age is his wisdom on the sport and on fitness. So check out his shows, check out his website, give him a shout. Also, October 11th through 13th this year is the 85th anniversary of the Mister America. In the meantime, you want to go get cool hats and and shirts? Check out MisterAmerica.com. Thanks again, Kent. All right. Thank you, Mark. All right. Hey, hope everybody had a great another listen with Kent Beerley of part two of two. Um, we're pretty sure there's going to be another one. In the meantime, while we wait for that, remember October 11th through 13th is the 85th anniversary of the Mr. America. It's going to be the biggest and most exciting event yet. Make sure you're there. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Nothing to say, oh God, nothing to say, I ain't have